The intent of this video is to answer the question, could a bomber's 50 caliber machine gun bullets penetrate the hull of a World War II German submarine? We will need to review typical anti-submarine patrol aircraft versus U-boat combat engagement tactics. This video is a part four of the channel's World War II bomber versus submarine Battle of the Atlantic series. Aircraft played a deadly role in destroying German submarines in World War II. This chart outlines the causes of U-boat sinkings from a 1946 Chief of Naval Operations anti-submarine warfare in World War II report. The x-axis is the U-boat engagement periods. Each period is roughly nine months. The y-axis is the number of U-boats sunk per month within that period. The shaded columns in the body of the chart are the causes of U-boat sinkings. The causes of submarine sinkings are surface craft only, aircraft and surface craft working together, aircraft only, submarines, and other. Black May, the turning point in the Battle of the Atlantic, is shown by this column. Submarines sunk by aircraft is represented by the shaded sections here. The two clear trends in the chart include submarine sinkings and the aircraft share of U-boat sinkings both increased as the war progressed. The B-24 bomber and its variants destroyed more submarines than any other aircraft in World War II. The B-24 bombers were armed with various anti-submarine kill stores in addition to their machine guns. The patrolling tactics for finding U-boats, usage of depth bombs, and air-to-sea rockets will be covered in future videos. There are many instances of patrolling bomber gunners firing on submarines. The B-24 bomber and its variants were armed with 8 to 10 Browning AN-M2 50 caliber machine guns. The ammo adopted by the patrolling bombers fired an armor-piercing bullet. Each machine gun fired up to 14 rounds per second, as defined in this declassified 1944 aircrew gunnery manual. All the images shown in this video are declassified. Once a submarine is spotted by the plane's observers or radar, the aircraft will start the attack run. As shown in the Part 3 video, there exists a 55% chance a submarine will still be on the surface or partially on the surface during the plane's attack run. The attack run will include strafing the submarine with the bomber's machine guns in addition to dropping depth charges or firing air-to-sea rockets. The bomber will drop its depth charges on the submarine at around 100 feet in altitude as defined in this January 1945 anti-submarine instructions and escort of convoy manual. The strafing altitude will be at 100 feet as the bomber passes over the submarine. Both the bomber gunners and the submarine deck guns, if manned, will be firing at point-blank distances. The bomber gunners will start to open fire when they are 2,000 yards away from the U-boat, as defined in the forward firing rocket section of the same report. Bomber gunners should aim at the submarine deck personnel either in the conning tower or the U-boat crews manning the deck guns, as described in the U-boat attack section. Another vital target is the main engine air induction piping. This is located around 25 feet aft of the conning tower, as shown in this image. Oh, and by the way, don't shoot at submarine crew members who are in the water. In a bomber versus submarine gun battle, the odds are on the side of the airplane, as discussed in this image from the June 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The aircraft fire will be more accurate than the submarine's deck guns, and the U-boat crews will be very exposed and vulnerable to aircraft 50 caliber machine gun fire. The report goes on to state, bomber gunner strafing accuracy needs to be precise and the volume of fire needs to be poured onto the submarine during the bomb run. The lives of the bomber crew members may depend on it. Success will be measured by killed submarine crew members or U-boat crew members kept away from the deck and conning tower guns during the attack run without the aircraft suffering any damage. So would a stray machine gun 50 caliber armor piercing bullet penetrate the U-boat's conning tower or pressure hole? This chart outlines a penetration gauge of an armor piercing 50 caliber bullet fired from a 36 inch barrel at a homogeneous armored steel plate at various angles and distances. The chart was extracted from a September 1945 Terminal Ballistics Data Volume 3 report. The data has been replotted in this image for ease of discussion. The x-axis is a firing distance to the steel plate from 0 to 2,000 yards. The y-axis is the thickness of the steel armor at which bullet penetration occurred from 0 to 1.11 inches. 
The curves in the body of the chart are for bullet strike angles perpendicular to the plate and 45 degrees to the plate. A couple observations and trends can be extracted from the chart. A bullet loses its penetration power the farther away it is shot from the target and or if striking the target at offset angles. For example, a steel plate of 1.12 inches thick will stop a 50 caliber armor piercing slug at .0 range, whereas a .48 inch thick steel plate will stop a 50 caliber armor piercing slug if struck at an offset angle of 45 degrees. This is why it's desirable for military tanks to employ sloping armor as shown in this Russian World War II T-34 tank. The T-34 steel armor thickness is 100 millimeters. 100 millimeters equates to 3.94 inches. A 50 caliber armor piercing bullet would not be able to penetrate this gauge. This chart defines the gauges of the German Type 7 pressure hull and conning tower from an April 1944 Office of the Chief of Naval Operations document titled German and Japanese Submarines and Their Equipment. The submarine's pressure hull is 35 millimeters thick and the conning tower is slightly thinner at 32 millimeters thick. 32 millimeters equates to 1.26 inches. As shown in the previous graph, any armored steel plate over 1.12 inches will stop a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet fired from any distance or any angle. The submarine's pressure hull or conning tower should be able to stop a 50 caliber armor piercing bullet, especially at the greater distances and obliquity strike angles expected during an operational combat attack. This assumes the quality and impact resistance of the Krupp low alloy steel adopted in submarine fabrication is roughly equivalent to steel plate armor. Also, bomber gunners were instructed to aim at the submarine's deck crew or vulnerable main air induction intakes. If the U-boat's conning tower or pressure hull were vulnerable to 50 caliber armor piercing bullets, then gunners would be instructed to aim their guns at those parts of the airplane. The bomber gunners are strafing the submarine to suppress the U-boat's return fire and to kill crew members. Here's an interesting case study. On July 9, 1943, a B-24 sighted a submarine wake 10 miles ahead from 3,000 feet and went into attack as described in the June 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The bomb bay doors, however, would not open. The bomber gunners exchanged fire with the U-boat. The bomber gunners were effective in suppressing the U-boat fire. They only had the bomber machine guns to attack. Depth bombs were eventually released, but no sign of submarine damage. In summary, the submarine's hull or conning tower are too thick for a 50 caliber penetration. The results of the evaluation assume the steel adopted in the submarine's fabrication has more or less the bullet penetration resistance as the armored steel tested. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.